Hi, I'm Monica Bay. I'm here at the University of Florida with Craig Ball, and we go back forever. I'm eternally grateful to you for the wonderful Ball in Your Court Thank you, and I to you for being such a great, a great editor. We Thank had it. We're a great team. Indeed. And uh, I'm now, I'm now retired from ALM, and we're here at this fabulous conference. You're teaching courses in uh, e-discovery in Texas, am I remembering that correctly? I do teach. At the University of Texas School of Law, I teach an annual course called Electronic Discovery and Digital Evidence. Yes. So what we're talking about today at the University of Florida is that the students who are coming in, particularly the new students or the ones who are currently in school, don't really understand what the opportunities are if they learn e-discovery. Can you tell us a little bit about why it's so important for today's students to really, really get out of law school understanding this process and e-discovery. Sure. Um, it's an old-fashioned idea expressed in a new way, which is how important is the evidence in litigation? I'm a big believer that if you want to prove a case, you ought to find the evidence. Where does the evidence live today? The evidence doesn't live in a dusty bin on a shelf somewhere. The evidence lives in your cell phone, in your social networking site. It lives on your network. Uh, it lives in your Internet of Things life. So it's your thermostat, it's your ca the surveillance camera. All of that is digital, Monica. Every bit and byte of that is digital. So if you want to be a lawyer who says they can try a case but doesn't know how to find or deal with the evidence, then the best way to do that is to remain ignorant of electronic discovery. But if you want to be a lawyer who succeeds, if you want to be a lawyer who gets closer to the truth faster, cheaper, in a more compelling and objective way, if you want to be a lawyer who doesn't rely on the vicissitudes of a fast-changing, self-interested memory of a, of a witness, um, of, 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 of yesterday's evidence, well, then you, you just ignore a discovery. But if you want to be the lawyer who wins, then you make electronic evidence your mission. Why are lawyers so intimidated by the technology that's involved in that, and how do they get over it? Well, there are a lot of theories on that. One is it's self-selection, that lawyers tend to gravitate away from science and math. There are jokes that say, if lawyers understood math, they'd be making some real money on Wall Street. <laughs> or if lawyers understood science, they would have gone to medical school. Anything but be a lawyer. Lawyers are what, you know, political science majors end up doing. I think there's some self-selection. The rest of it's intimidation, which is we've been so set up to believe that if we aren't the smartest person in the room, if we leave any opening that's a vulnerability, that some uh, opponent will run in and take advantage of it. And so we often subconsciously and consciously position ourselves to avoid the thing where we will maybe not look like the smartest person. And if technology is your Achilles heel, uh, then it's easier to just sort of avoid it than it is to embrace it. The, the thing I would add is that it's not that hard to learn all you need to know to be competent in e-discovery. You don't have to become an expert. You just have to understand enough to know what experts do, to be able to question an expert, to cross-examine an expert. And that doesn't take reinventing yourself with a new four-year degree and a three-year advanced degree. It takes applying yourself with, well, let me give it to you this way. I, I, I like to hearken back to when all of us were young and got our driver's license. Yeah. You know, it was really important to me, and I'm sure to you, to get our driver's license. Oh, yes. And so we studied, we practiced, we prepared for a test, we devoted some time to it, and as a consequence of that modicum of effort, we gained skills that serve us virtually every day of our lives. That's learning e-discovery. Sure, going in it's scary and unfamiliar, but if you give it that modicum of effort, all of a sudden it frees you to become a much more complete and a much more capable human being. That's a very good point. And before I let you go, what advice would you give to a 1L who's just starting law school? It's a very competitive world out there to be a lawyer today. I don't envy you, 1L, but you still have opportunities. And one of the big opportunities you have is your natural fluency with technology. Because you're not scared of technology. You grow up with technology in your hand every moment, every day. 
you come to this process with an advantage over the older people at your firm, the people that you want to impress and serve. So I would say gain the technical fluency you need to not only be able to serve the clients they give you, but the clients that the partners you work for are serving. Help meet their deficiencies and they will reward you with longevity and promotion at the firm. Very good advice. Thank Kripal, you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Monica Bay and thank you for watching.